Hey everyone and welcome back to Terminal Tramway with me, GWFM. We're on episode 12 of season 4 and it's uh, pretty much, it's probably the penultimate episode of the season. Uh, there's a few reasons why, we'll get into that shortly. But first of all, we've got the question of the day and the question of the day is to anyone obviously who plays Football Manager, who is the favourite who is your favourite player that you've ever signed for a free transfer? Mine, I had this conversation on my Twitch stream the other day, and it, I think it was, oh God, it was back in the early 2000s at some point, when Leeds were still in the Premier League, and I happened to sign an unknown Spanish guy called uh, Pep Guardiola on a free transfer. It was like 34 or something like that, so however many years it was since he was 34, that's when I signed him. I think it may have been on one of the, you know, when it had the transition between champ manager and football manager, it might have been one of them. But yeah, I remember him being class. Uh, yeah, fond memories. Um, we've won the league. Um, in some style as well. We are 14 points clear of second, second place Sheffield United. In fact, let's get the big table up. We've scored 109 goals. And just one thing I do want to highlight at this stage. Gold if it's a plus 49. We've conceded the 60. We're still conceding goals at front and centre. But if I just go to the records. This episode could see us break a record that's stood for 60 years. So, yeah. 111 goals. We've only got three games to get two goals, you know. We should do it, to be honest with you. There's another thing I want to do as well. In terms of towards the back end of the season, is we are currently sat on 91 points with three games to play. I'd love to hit 100. I'd hit, love to hit that 100 mark. Something I haven't done for a long time in any of my seasons. Hit 100. I've got close. I've got 99, 98, uh, a couple of times, but never 100. So I know chances are we're probably going to balls it up against today's opponent, which is Colchester. But let's have a look and see how we actually won the league. So last time you joined us, it was for the game against MK Dons, and we beat them 1-0, if you remember rightly. After that, we had a home game against Scunthorpe, who were, tw who were 23rd at the time, and we threw it away again. I mean, we were 2-0 down, to be fair, and we, we went 3-2 in front, and I'm thinking, oh yeah, I'm buzzing my tits off here, we're going to come back and, and, and beat them 3-2 three, three, or, or even more, and then we conceded in the 87th minute. Cheers. Cheers, lads. Then we had an away game against Bury, and this is where the promotion happened. Uh, I don't know what happened, I must have been nervous or something. But it was 4-2 at our time. <laughs> a ridiculous game. And then um, we managed to nearly throw it away. We were 4-all with it 12 minutes to go. I couldn't believe it, I, I was going mad, I was going to spare. Unfortunately, Fred popped up with a, a late winner on the 84th minute, and that was how the game finished. 5-4, twitchy arse time it was in that one. And we managed to get the win in the end, 5-4. Uh, it was a, a crazy game, but fortunately, we were held on and won. Um, not that it would have mattered, really, because we won the next couple of games anyway. Starting with um, a West Yorkshire side in the shape of Bradford City, the team I am currently with uh, at the minute on the Twitch save. Uh, Wednesdays and Sundays, 8 o'clock onwards. It varies. Sometimes it's 9 o'clock start, but yeah, check us out. Link's in the description. And yeah, 3-0 no win. Quite comprehensive. Destroyed them. Job done, basically. Uh, moved us into the last game, which was against Barnsley, away from home in South Yorkshire, and we destroyed him 3-0. And, the, and the manager of Barnsley is none other, and I'm surprised it was such a piece of piss, is the legend, the legend that is George Adji. You know, the guy, remember the guy who used to play for Barcelona? You know, you might remember the sensible soccer days, I don't know, but I remember it being, uh, Hadji was up, up top, and I think it was Romario at the time. Look how good he is for this level, and we destroyed him 3-0. So yeah, uh, that was very, very nice indeed. And obviously today we've got Colchester, the, who have still got Mickey Mellon at the helm. 15th, similar, similar to last season, if I remember rightly. Or not, they got promoted last season. I don't know what I was thinking. But uh, there's just a couple of bits of news I want to highlight. And they, we'll start off with the under-18s youth team. And basically what it is, is uh, we missed out on the FA Youth Cup. The, the You know, the big one in terms of the youth you know, competitions. Uh, and... Yeah, we've got a semi-final of that, but we've won the league one, the, the one that's just for our division. Pissed all over everyone from a great height. We even won 5-0 in the final. Fantastic achievement. Look at all this, all the all the Tramia badges everywhere, um, apart from clean sheets and what have you. But that's just in that, literally the, you know, just this competition. But even so, top goal scorers, Alfie Smith and Adderton, 7 and 6 respectively. Alfie Smith and Jennings are top performers uh, with the assist coming from uh, Noah Kursky and, um, is it Noah Kursky? 
yeah, Neil Kosky and Jennings. Get the cards, Lee Kennedy, top lad. And yeah, just absolutely buzzing with the youth that's come that's coming through, to be fair. And whether they get to get a chance in the championship, we'll have to wait and see. Some of them are getting chances at the minute. Uh, I'll probably show you Nicky Webb if I remember uh, on his development. But yeah, last two years we've won it now. And we've also won the league as well, if I just show you that, if I can find it. Yeah, we've also won the uh, Division 3 North West twice in a row as well. Looks like there's no promotions for whatever reason because we won it last season as well. So yeah, the youth is looking pretty damn awesome at this moment in time compared to the other teams in the region. One thing I do want to mention also to do with the youth is I got a new youth coaching. Um, I can't remember who's gone, but I just I think he came up and I just thought I'm going to have to try and get him in. Technical, 20. Working with youngsters is 20. Determination, 16. Motivating, 14. Discipline 10 a little bit on the low side. I thought it was it could be decent for getting in for uh, maybe ball control or something like that. Um, I know Mentor's only 9, but he's a pretty decent um, guy to have in. And I reckon he's probably going to improve in these attributes as well. Fingers crossed. Probably the ones that are relevant. I think I've got I can't remember what I've got him training on. I'll check it out now. Yeah, indeed, I've got him on ball control, which I believe it's, it uses mental. So if the mental goes up, he could be absolutely fantastic for terms of ball control. So yeah, looking forward to all the first touches being 20. Coming soon. And then probably the one that actually you, you probably wanted to know the most is what's his transfer budget going to be and his wage budget. Now, his wage budget is a little on the low side. Uh, that's what's available, should I say. In fact, it's probably on the run screen here. Let's go into finances. There we go. We've got a wage budget of 83,000. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's going to be quite low in terms of the championship. Uh, the transfer budget is, just call it 3.2 million. It's not bad, to be fair. 60% uh, of transfer revenue uh, is made available. It's quite a lot. They must be expecting quite a decent payment coming out, or uh, well, coming to us uh, from the end, at the end of the season. Uh, it be interesting to see. I'm just going to quickly have a look at uh, the championship like wage budgets, Let's just, if I can find it, that is. Now looking at what we've been spending this year on wages and whatever, it's 2.02 million that we're spending. If we go up into the championship, the bottom side, 4.96, it's more than double, it's like 150% more they're spending, and that's to get relegated basically looking at this. Uh, Portsmouth as well, but spending another million on top of that. So it's going to be tough, it's going to be really tough. Even the bottom three spenders are the ones coming down looking at it. I mean, who's 21st? 21st is Bristol City. We're ninth in the league, but yeah, uh, ninth in the league for salary per annum. But yeah, that, they've, they've got a big bill. 18.83. Fucking hell. But anyway, that's enough about all the uh, nitty gritty and stuff. Let's get into today's game, which is, is of course, against Colchester United. We'll have another look at Mickey Mellon, uh, probably for the final time, I would imagine, unless we get them in the cup competitions or we get relegated. But I'm hoping it's not going to be the case. Yeah, decent manager for this level, definitely. An ma awesome manager at the League 2 level. Definitely too good for there. Definitely too good for Van Ar 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 National League level with Tramia. Not entirely sure what it's like in real life, if I'm completely honest. Uh, I'm pretty sure the Tramia supporters who comment regularly um, would fill us in with that. Uh, it's, you know, like you always do anyway, so yeah. But the, uh, the key player is actually a regen on loan from Liverpool. And he looks decent, to be fair. First touch of 17 scares the hell out of me. And he's naturally fit as well. 18-year-old winger. Yeah, definitely looks uh, definitely looks apart, doesn't he? But anyway, let's get into today's game. Let's let's go out in style. Let's leave League One in style. But before we do, I did say I was going to show you Nicky Webb. And I like the fact that his pace has gone up to 13. If we quickly highlight this, he started off on 10 pace. is now up to 12.6. Well, 13 otherwise known as. But yeah, very happy with his progress um, and a few others as well. But this is a team I'm going to be picking. Um, I, let me know in the comments, in fact, at this point. Would you rather me just show you who we're picking and not give a shit about who we're facing, i.e. the next screen you're going to see, i.e. this one? Um, because obviously I, it does take a little bit of time. I've noticed in my videos... I'm going to try and make them shorter. I'm just trying to think of little bits I can cut out. Is there certain things you think it's just a waste of time? Let us know. Feedback is greatly important uh, to me anyway. I, you know, Obviously, don't just say, you wank, mate, or whatever, because that's not really constructive. You know, I'd like to be able to improve. I'd like to know why something's bad and whether I can do something. So, yeah, let us know in the comments. Greatly appreciate it if you do. But I said potentially for the last time, but it might not be, because I might have got a couple of videos done ahead of this. So... Be interested to know what you think. Anyway, 
Walker in goal for them. They've got Claxton at right back. Junior Moraes at left back with Panzo and Kent in the middle of defence. They've got a lap seal and uh, Banningeen in uh, defensive midfield positions with Slater just ahead of them. Myers guy highlighted uh, before the game and Tony on the wings with a pie up top on his own. We're going with Cairns and Gove, Tavernier at right back, Cranky at left back, who seems to have changed skin colour somewhat. I'm pretty sure he wasn't of that uh, ethnic back background, but you know. Never mind, maybe he's just incredibly tanned. Got Clegg as well, who's always like uh, changing colour as well, it has to be said. And Snares, it seems to be all of them. Although I think O'Connor is actually that persuasion. But Snares, I'm pretty sure he was like pasty white and had like orangey hair. The Norwegian guy. So I'm not entirely sure. I think it is a bug in the game, to be fair. But anyway, Clegg and Snares in the middle of defence. Got Malumbi partnering O'Connor, who is, who is coming on leaps and bounds. Let's have a look at him. Say coming on leaps and bounds and look at all that red. Cheers, pal. But yeah, leadership. Definitely going to be captain later on. Determination of 15. Just need that work rate up as well. But so we've got Gribbon on the left, Bruce on the right, Armstrong, Partners, Lavatory. Let's get into them, boys. Let's kick some ass. So I'm basically just going to say pick up where you left off last time because we won 3 0 against Barnsley with Georgie Hadji. Georgie Hadji as manager. Well, what the fuck's the world coming to when Georgie Hadji is the manager of Barnsley? And this is without all the money as well, I might add. But yeah, we're into the game. Obviously, there's nothing really rad in it. It's a bit of like a, it's like a send-off, like the link between the, the actual current manager. That's if he's still in charge. I assume he still is because they're not doing that bad. I think they're in the playoffs in real life uh, at Tranmere. But Mickey Mellon, yeah, um, that's what the save was about. The Tranmere were in turmoil because they got rid of like a, a well-liked manager and got me in. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. It's a bit of a send-off. It's like a bit of a, a bit of closure, if you will. Um, but yeah, looks like they're going to have a chance early on, Colchester. So that is, I think we won 5-3 earlier on in the season, if I remember, if memory serves me correctly. Myers on the ball, whips it in. There you go, 1-0. Could have seen it coming a mile away. Demand some more, pal. Is that where I said pal? Should be guys. You know, never mind. Myers took it wide, of course. Two men morphing inside each other several times. Quite impressive, to be fair. And then Slater heading away, beating three defenders in the air, it seems. And they're like, this walking out like the... I don't know, on a, on, a, on a catwalk or something. And then it's cleared away once again by Clegg, but it comes back again. Banning Geen? I still don't know. That guy? That might change it to that. Myers, free chance. Crossed in, a pile there with a the header. Save is made, and then Tony scores the rebound. And boys, this is absolutely appalling. This is not the send-off I was looking for. You've got to show some passion now, lads. It's just disgustingly bad. I mean, what the hell happened here? I mean, they were just taking the piss here. Look at this. It was a bit of a deflection. And then Myers just crosses in. I mean, you feel it's going to shoot. Nice save from Cairns. It was a little bit of a, a soft header, in my opinion, for, to parry away. Uh, remi reminded me of Felix Riedeveld, but uh, never mind. We need an instant goal back in my opinion here, but it looks like they're going to get a third. Oh, good save, Cairns, but I don't feel like much confidence that they're having five shots to our none in reply. So, what do you do in this situation? Do you change it? We are getting dominated, so yeah, I'm going to actually change it to uh, possession-based. Uh, this gives a second here. Retain possession, short of passing, get rid of passing to space. Let's see if this helps. It has worked a couple of times this season. I haven't had to go to it that many times, but you know, it is what it is. Right, Gribbin's on the ball. Can we actually have a shot that's actually a highlight? Malumbi's on it now. Finds Gribbin. Crossing position. Got three in the box. Can we find one? It's headed away by Panzo. O'Connor. Very impressive in recent times. He's now a two-star player. Which sounds like shit still. But never mind, because Bruce is in. 2-1. Come box on. Get praise. Praise. I, I've said people say praise makes people complacent. Or players complacent, rather. I found it's one of the best tools in the game, in my opinion. I don't know if it's true. I don't know if it's just, uh, just there for the sake of it. Or it actually means anything, but the amount of times I've praised the players and I've gone on the score straight after. It's ridiculous. I might have like double salvos as they call them in the, in the text below. It's unreal. Right. Obviously it hasn't happened this time. <laughs> but it's not that many not not that long since the last goal. And here we go, Gribbin with a tame effort straight walker, but it could have been different, but never mind. Right, so we've managed to even it out somewhat in terms of chances and got the possession back on level terms, so maybe Possession was the way forward. Let's give him a bit of a kick up the ass. I'm not going to be aggressive because it's only 1-0 and 
you know, it's not as if we're getting destroyed. I did go aggressive on one of the other games. I just fucked up there. Never mind. There we go. Um, and it did work. That was to some degree. I think that was the. I want to say it was the Scunthorpe game at Cabin because that was before half time. But um, one game in particular, I think we were losing uh, 2 0 uh, or something like that. And it were half time and I gave him an absolute bollocking and it paid off somewhat, like I say. Thinking back now, I think it was actually the Twitch save as we're going to concede. Oh, clear the flying by Tavernier. Get in. Never mind. But yeah, it was the Twitch save. I remember now. Uh, it was on. Well, at the moment of record, it was Monday night. This is it. It would have been on Sunday. Uh, we were 2 0 down over Bradford City and we ended up winning 5 2. What a response. I can't believe that. They still score from this. That guy squared it to Tony. And yeah, Kane's like powerless. Right, so I'm taking off Adam Armstrong, who's got a 6.0, and Sam O'Connor's not playing much better, 6.5, but he's a little bit a little bit tired as well. So bringing on Stephen Boyd and Simone Moritori, who has been very impressive this season, it has to be said. Come on, boys. I'm going to change it up, I think, when it gets to 70 minutes to the uh, normal standard tactic. Right, so I've just changed it up a little bit here. I've um, gone for a more direct, pass into space, exploit the flanks. I think we've got to go, go for it. It's not to lose. We're already champions. Uh, Colchester, like I said, they seem to be good at scoring goals. Like I said, they scored three against us last time. I'm hoping we can uh, pull a bit of a performance out of his ass, uh, but I'm I'm not op that optimistic. But who knows? Here comes Lavatory. Three, two. Eat those words, G. Eat those words. Uh, can't do anything here for some reason. Never mind. Cat prayers. No cat fat boys to the mitt. I can now, but sometimes it does it. Sometimes it doesn't. I don't know why. But we need to push on and get a goal. Get another goal rather. Gribbing. Did get an assist there, I believe. I, I think so. Oh, no, it didn't. It was the other striker. I'm trying to get Gribbin to get, like, decent performances to win the, the thing, which obviously he's not going to win it now because uh, I thought I probably were going to score, but because Brewster's playing better than him, he's the one that's most likely to win it, which, by the way, look at these increases here. Determination's going up. He's not even getting chewed because he's on loan. But here's Moritari. The changes paid off that I've made. Gribbin. Every time I say Gribbin, I still feel like it sounds like a chuffin frog or something. Here's Lavatory. V2 Brewster. Brewster. Catherine Brewster from Terminator 3. Yeah, Terminator. Th Terminator 3? I think it's Terminator 3. Is it? Mine's gone blank. Terminator 3. I'm sure it's Terminator 3. Rise against the machine. Yes, it is Terminator 3. The one with the woman, Terminator. But yeah, Catherine Brewster with the goal. 3 all. Get praise, son. And a Mecca's final change. So Callum Gribbin is playing shy, and I, I can't be arsed now. He's not going to win the he's not going to win the player of the season now anyway. Let's bring on Nicky Webb and give him a good ten minutes or so. Right, well that's game over. It seems so no one hundred points dream this season. Unfortunately, still waiting to do that as well. Unless of course no, Tavernier can just pass straight to Kelly. Uh, unless no, uh, Brewster. Oh no, there we go. Final whistle. Shut up, G. But we broke the record for the most goals. In the League One, in the League One season, in the third tier, the most goals ever scored so since 1961-2 season. Fantastic achievement from us. It's a testament to the to the, to the tactic, really, and that's why I like this tactic so much because there's plenty of goals both ways, as you've just witnessed three all. And to be fair, they've done brilliant to come back and salvage the draw. Yes, it's against a part like against part opposition, but uh, it is what it is. A great performance from a self-assured looking Rian Brewster. Very happy with his performance. He did get a 7 out of 10 in the first half as well, so you can't be too mad with him. Yeah, buzzing. And there it is in all its glory. 112 goals, Tranmere Rovers. I'm absolutely buzzing. To break an actual record is absolutely fantastic. Now, a couple of things I'll do just before. As I look at the club, I'm just going to check the information. See if anything's happened. Nope, we're still just, you know, favoured personnel. We've basically got... You know, the the height, the pinnacle of where Chamu were was the second tier. I've now got them promoted all the way back to that level in four seasons. And I'm still just a favourite personnel. I expected at least an icon. Who knows, maybe in the turn when the you know the season's fully finished and it's it like registers it. Maybe we'll check it then. But what'll happen is because if I go to the schedule We've got the last two games of the season, Coventry and Sheffield United. We could potentially stop them from going up, I think. Anyway, let's have a look at the uh, the actual league table. 
Uh, yes, we still could. Wigan could still pick them to the post. And Coventry, to be fair, second and fourth place. I'm kind of glad that we're already up because that's two tough challenges, if I'm honest with you. Uh, look at that. Six games lost all season. Fantastic achievement for me. For me, yeah. For, definitely for me. So a fantastic climax to the season, it seems, anyway. Obviously, we drew the game today, which I'm not too disappointed. We've already... There's nothing to play for. We're already up. We're already, you know, league winners. And the only thing I'm disappointed about is the fact that we can't hit the 100 point mark, but it's not really that, that much of a big deal in the whole scheme of things. And yeah, it's been uh, been a decent season. Definitely, obviously, uh, a, prog a progressive season. Um, I was expecting playoffs at the beginning of the season. Uh, well, I wasn't expecting, I was aiming for playoffs. Probably expecting mid table based on last season. It all depending on how well the, the players, the new players that came in gelled, but they, they've done really, really well to be fair. A little bit disappointed with Kalmar, but we'll have to wait and see if he if he can up his game next season. But yeah, hopefully you have enjoyed this video. If you have one, I'd go ahead and press that like button, it'd be greatly appreciated. As would subscribing if you are indeed new. And if you think anyone else would enjoy this sort of content or you know this this team or whatever, or anything that I do. Go ahead and share it around. Um, obviously, leave the comments below uh, for any feedback that I asked earlier on. Uh, any, any comments do help the channel to be found in the suggested videos, etc. Uh, that's all greatly appreciated as well. So, yeah. Until next time, the end of season review coming up next. And until then, I'll see you then. Bye-bye.